Before the start of this video, I would just like to say a huge thank you to all my supporters across all platforms. Without your support, videos like the one you're about to watch would never happen. So huge thanks to each and every one of you. Have you ever wanted to make that special weapon or craft a set of armor that is of superior quality to everyone else's or even that loot which is so well made then the price is completely off the scale see what i did there anyway in this video i will be looking at the crafting system within the mithras rule set my name's inwills and welcome to the in crowd Hello and welcome back. You have stumbled across another one of my short rule videos. Now in these videos, I share with you some sort of rule or some aspect of the rule system from Mithras in a short and concentrated video so that you can quickly listen in and get it implemented into your game. Now, one aspect of the Mithras rule set that I really like is the concept of the crafting skill. This skill initially is a generic skill based on the characteristics of intelligence and dexterity. Now, when I say generic, I mean that you need to be very specific about which crafting skill your skill is related to. So, for example, it could be craft alchemy or craft blacksmithing or something even more specialised like craft jewellery or even rings or weapons, whether or not these are missile weapons, ranged weapons, two-handed or just those fine stiletto daggers. Now the most important thing about the crafting skill is that it allows you to do several things. You can repair old items that have just lost some hit points of wear through age and wear and tear or you can repair items that have lost specific hit points in combat for example that might be your weapons or armor or you can craft completely new items using a range of resources and a set amount of time. And if you do have the time, resources and skill levels, you can actually create items that are enhanced. So if you fancy doing some of that, what do you need to know? So first up, you need to find the resources. Now, this is kept very flexible and lands firmly in the hands of the GM. You can decide as the game master what the availability is of certain resources as in certain locations and what needs to be located or discovered in order to create the item. The amount also needs to be decided upon. Small quantities are needed for repairing, but larger quantities are needed to create um, either new or unique items. You could, for example, say that a specific material is needed and that the ore is only found in the prison level of the local orc infested mines, or the chosen wood is protected by dryads. You can be as creative as you wish and integrate the material and its location into your existing campaign. As well as the location of these resources, they need to be gathered. And if you want to encourage the resources to be collected via the players and their characters, then there is a circumstance modified table on page 65 of the core rule book detailing the appropriate difficulty grade for harvesting the resources with or without tools. 
So after the resources have been decided upon and the um, these have been gathered and are of suitable quality for your item, the next thing that you need to decide on as the GM is the amount of time it will take to craft the item or to repair it. Now there's a table on page 66 of the core rulebook to provide you some idea of the length of these task round. These task rounds are a unit of time. Now this is not the total amount of time that will be needed to craft say a new item. The crafter will use at least four of these units of time to eventually and hopefully create an item. So in order to get a better idea of the, what these task round units are, let's have a look at creating an item. So in order to create an item, the crafter will roll their crafting skill and makes a note of the success. Now, each of these rolls takes the amount of time as the task round unit. Now, if the roll is a success, then the crafter adds 25% to the completion of the item. A critical roll, however, adds 50% to the completion of the item. A failure adds nothing at all, but a fumble actually deducts 25%. Now, the crafter makes four of these rolls and the item has an overall quality after these four task rolls. So if the crafter does not achieve 100% of completion by the end of the four rolls, then the item is flawed in some way. But we'll have a look at this after we've talked about the exciting part, which is all about the enhancements. But before we talk about those enhancements, please consider like, liking, commenting and subscribing to the video and my channel. I make Mithras rules videos as well as actual play sessions, personal blogs and videos all about GMing in the series called The Gibbering GM. So if you like the content, if it's been beneficial to you, then please consider subscribing and pressing that bell button. Now, also, if you would like to prov provide some additional support, then the links to my Patreon and Ko-fi accounts are down in the descriptions, as well as the usual tiers and benefits. There are some that are designed specifically for role players like ourselves. And with these, you can gain um, an insight into the background knowledge of the both the Mithras and the M-Space campaign that we um, play. Plus, at a red order or higher, you actually get to see my own adventure notes after an adventure has been completed. So please consider supporting me in any way you can. I really do appreciate it. And it takes me ever closer to my dream of being a full-time content creator. Okay then, back to creating and enhancing those items. So if you remember, we left our crafter in the forge and we said that they needed to roll their crafting skill and every time they gained a success, they would um, receive 25% towards the completion, etc. Now, if the crafter completes the item, i.e. they have achieved 100%, within four or fewer rolls, then they can have the option of continuing to work the item to possibly add enhancements. Now, this has to be considered very carefully for the various reasons. Okay, so to to see whether or not the item is enhanced, the crafter again rolls their crafting skill. If they get a success, then the item will have one enhancement. If they gain a critical success, then they will get two enhancements. But, and this is why it has to be considered very carefully, if they fumble, the quality of the item will be reduced away from that 
it's a bit like you've overworked it or didn't know when to stop. On page 67, there is a table of the overall quality of an item and the positives and negatives to the modifying roles when using the item. For example, if the quality of the item is flawed, then only, i.e. it only reads 75% within the four crafting roles, then the item will wear out faster um, than the normal standard items. In this case, the number of hit points it has will be reduced to 25%. So what about these enhancements and what effect can they possibly have? Well, for me, this is the fun part. There are five possible enhancements that you can add to a, an item. These can be stacked on top of each other, but you're not allowed to have two of the same items. And I'll come back to that as we're talking about the enhancements. So each of the enhancements affect the item in a certain way. So the first enhancement is desirable and this enhancement increases the value of the item. It increases it in such a way that it is doubled. Now, just to go back to the, my previous point, you if you could add two enhancements, then you can add desirable and the second one that we'll talk about in a minute, say durable, you can add them both, but you would not be able to add two desirable um, enhancements to an item. So you couldn't make it double and then double it again. So yes, you can have two different um, enhancements, but you can't have two of the same. Now, what are these other enhancements? So we've had desirable okay you can have durable and in this case the hit points of the item is increased by one you can have resilient and the items armor points in this case will be increased by one you can have efficient the item gives a five percent bonus to any skill roles using the item yeah, that's the one I like. And finally, effective. The weapon has plus one to its damage rolls and its encumbrance is actually reduced by 1d2 points. So if you had a critical success with two enhancements, you could actually make a weapon say that is both efficient and effective. When using this weapon, the user would get 5% bonus to their attack rolls, their damage rolls would be plus one, and their encumbrance would be reduced by 1d2. Am I tempting you to take that crafting skill now? I hope you can see that with these crafting rules, characters can create their own unique weapons and armor that could actually have a positive impact on their skill roles. This makes heirlooms, you know, weapons or armor or items such as rings and jewelry, or even that for aforementioned loot that even more special as they are passed down family lines. You know, there might be a superb crafter somewhere in the campaign that has that high skill. That means that their critical chance is high. Then if that exists, then I think no party would mind crossing the desert even to find this crafter. It would be worth seeking them out and getting them to make their armor or weapon or even that loot. Crafting skills are so useful and with the right amount of motivation, players can set up their crafting shop, for example, to produce items during their downtime or even craft their own weapons that are enhanced or even they might go on a perilous quest to find that unique resource or that ore that they need to gain in order to make their own or get somebody to make that famous, infamous, unique weapon for them. And that's it for crafting items. Remember, if you have any other rules that you would like me to explore, then do let me know in the comments below. And if I've made any 
in Will's blunders, then please do point them out as well. So until next time, I hope all your opposed roles are successful and reward you with a well-deserved special. Happy Mithrasing, everyone. See ya. Bye.